Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess and welcome to our 11th lab exercise demonstrating the ArcGIS hydrology tools. Now in this lab we're going to see how to use that stream polyline feature class we created back in lab exercise 7. We're going to turn it into a traversable network that we can use to find the shortest paths between points. And these shortest paths are interesting and useful because they're constrained to these polylines and therefore in this example they're constrained to the hydrologic network. Now we often want to know how far apart two features are, such as when we're worried or we're hopeful about the possibility of a species in one location successfully colonizing a nearby location. If this is an invasive species, then we hope the distance is great enough to prevent movement. Now if this is an endangered species we're trying to recover, then we hope the distance is short enough to allow the species to cross. This kind of analysis is pretty easy to do and we just care about the straight line as the crow fly at distance. However, not everything is able to travel in straight lines. If our species are fish or some other aquatic obligate that can't survive outside of wetlands and riparian corridors, then the distance between the two sites should really be considered the distance through the hydrologic network. Now ArcGIS Pro offers a way to generate what they call a trace network from our streams and we can then use this trace network to find the shortest path through that network. So let's see how the process works. Now we have to start by creating a featured data set. So remember a featured data set is not a data set of features. That's a feature class. A featured data set is a special object that contains one or more feature classes and often additional objects. And in this case one of those additional objects is going to be the trace network that allows us to traverse the stream paths. Okay so let's, let's create our featured data set. We go to our catalog, we go to our default geodatabase where we've been working. I'm using Scratch Watershed Lab. Just right click in here, go to New Feature Data Set. We're going to name our new feature data set for Stream Trace Network. Now this is important. We have to change the coordinate system to uh, UTM Zone 12 from NAD83. And, uh, I've given you the WKID number here. You can use that. So we just uh, click the little box here, search for the WKID number, and there it is. So we're going to pick that. All right, we run it. There we go. We now have a new feature data set. We, we can open it up and we see there's nothing in there. We have to put our stream feature class in there, and we're going to do that in the next step. We turn to our map. Now within our map we should have two feature classes in here. We should have the Flagstaff Stream Network that you created earlier. And then we have this two sample springs point feature class that should be in your watershed data geodatabase in your class data. So the idea is we want to get the shortest path from spring to spring but through the hydrologic network. Alright, so we've created our feature data set. Next step is to import our streams into that feature data set. We can do that by just right clicking on the streams layer, going to data and export features. These are the features that will be exported. Now here we have to pick where they go, so we have to put it into that feature data set. So let's hit the little folder button here. Let's come to our default geodatabase, Scratch Watershed Lab. This is the feature data set that we're going to put it in, so we open that up. And now we have to give it a name. We're going to call it Streams for Network. So this is going to be a new feature class called Streams for Network inside that feature data set, which again is inside the default geodatabase. All right. Hit OK. OK, so now we have Streams for Network. Now at this point I recommend taking your original stream feature class out because otherwise we might accidentally start editing that and we don't want to. So let's just remove that for now. We're just going to work from this version of it here. Okay, The next step is that we have to connect our springs to the polylines. And there's ways you can do it that are kind of complicated using the near tool and a uh, uh, whole combination of tools to create lines that are accurate. But in this case, uh, we're just going to draw them in manually. So we need to edit our streams for network. That means we go to the Edit tab. We're going to do the Create Features. 
Now we need to set our snapping environment. We only want to snap to points, which are the springs, and to the ends of polylines. Turns out that this whole trace network function doesn't work unless we connect to the very end point of a polyline. And uh, so that's, that's what we need to do. We need to set the snapping environment. This is the one that snaps to points. This is the one that snaps to the end points of lines. So those, those are the two we want. We don't want to snap to vertices and we don't want to snap to edges, and we don't want to snap to any uh, any arcs. So only these two. Okay. Now we have our Create Features pane open. We're going to add two streams. We click on the stream, click on this little construction tool. First one, we're going to connect this spring to the endpoint of this stream polyline. Okay, I click, I hit the F2, okay, there's one. Now we want to connect this one to this stream. So I click here, move down and click. F2 key saves it. Okay, we've added our two connection polylines. Our springs are now connected to the stream network. So we have to save our edits. Then we close our Create Features pane. And we're done with that step. Okay, now we start running some of the trace network tools. I'm going to clear the selection here. First one is called Create Trace Network. So we do that. That's in the Analysis Tools. Just going to type it in. Okay, there it is. We have to enter a featured data set. Remember, this isn't a feature class. So the featured data set is that one that we created and is currently holding the streams for network feature class inside it. So let's use this button to get there. We're in our Scratch Watershed Lab. This is the featured data set that we're using. So I select it, hit OK. We also have to give a name for our new trace network. I'm going to just name it Flagstaff Network. Now, input junctions and input edges. This allows us to input points or polyline feature classes that may be sitting in that feature data set and use them as part of the network. We didn't put in any points, so we don't have to do this input junctions. But we did put in the streams for network polyline feature class, so we want to select that from this drop box here. So there's our streams for network feature class. The connectivity policy. Simple edge is supposed to mean that it just connects to the endpoints of the polylines, or the if we chose complex edge, it's supposed to be able to work from the midpoints of the polylines. I've been having some trouble with these connectivity policies, so I'm just going with the complex edge for now. And it, it seems to be working, so we'll just go with that. Okay, we just hit run. Okay, now we have created our trace network. You see the whole screen turned purple? Well, it added this layer here. If we open it up, we see that this layer contains a few uh, subregions. Uh, this thing called dirty areas, which is in purple, doesn't mean it's dirty. It just means the topology has not been set up there yet. The next tool we run will set up topology and find the little nodes that connect all these polylines. Uh, when that's done, then ArcGIS considers it not to be dirty anymore, so it stops being purple. This whole dirty area is just lets you make edits to certain regions, and then only that small region becomes what they call dirty, so when you regenerate the topology, it only has to work on that small area. So it's a way of saving time when you're making edits to pieces of the data. And by the way, I told you that uh, feature data sets contain feature classes and other objects, and that trace network was one of those objects. If we actually go to our catalog, look inside that feature data set, we see that it did make this thing Flagstaff network. That is a trace network. So this is built off of the streams polyline. So we have added a new object to our feature data set. All right, anyway, let's get back to this. Next step, like I said, is to build that topology. And that is in the function called Enable Network Topology. So we have to open a new tool, Enable Network Topology. There it is. And we just have to pull in this network here. We don't have to set any other options. Uh, just hit go. It's going to examine the area. It's going to find the nodes and 
it's going to get rid of that purple stuff. All right, so it's all done. So now what we have is a bunch of gray circles. These represent the junction points at which polyline or stream segments connect. So now when we try to find the shortest path, it's actually not caring so much about the polylines themselves, but rather the junction nodes here. So it like this, it knows that this junction node here is connected to this junction node and this junction node, and it knows what nodes each node is connected to and then the algorithm just kind of connects nodes and as part of that it just pulls in the connecting polyline. All right so we've got our topology generated. So the next step is to select the two nodes on the network that we want to connect up. Those are going to be our two springs right this one and this one. Now to do that we have to click the trace network tab that opens up the trace network ribbon. So we use the trace locations to set the two points that we want to connect up. That is this, we choose the starting points option. This opens this little window. Then we just use this button to click on the points that we want to connect. Now one, one problem with this tool is that uh, if you, you select this spring, it's probably also going to select the polyline touching it. We really only want to select the spring. So just to avoid that problem right now, I'm going to turn off the streams uh, for a minute. Now I can click on this. It adds this junction to the list. Now I click on this one. It adds a second junction to the list. And you can only have two in here. So if you add more than that, the tool will just fail and says it can only do two. So these are the two we want. So let's just go ahead and turn our streams back on again. All right, so this part is done. Next step is to use the shortest path tool to actually generate the connection between these two points. Open shortest path. Now most of this is already set up. We don't need to change anything. We do need to set a value here. We need to tell it to, when it's trying to decide what's the shortest path, what attribute should it use to decide what the length is? And we're just going to use the actual length, shape length. I mean, you could get fancy with this. You could set a field that also incorporated like drive time or speed limits or something. But we're just going to go with a pure length. Now, if we hit run right now, it will select those stream features that make that shortest path. So let's do that. I'll show you another way to do this in a second. All right, but there we go. We have now selected the segments to connect these two points. If we're curious how long that is, it's in these streams are the ones that are selected. So we can just open the attribute table. We have 31 segments selected, so we can just right click here and do statistics. And here we see that it's 25,951 meters. So that's how long it is to get through the stream network. If we wanted to find out what the distance was as the crow flies or straight line, we could just hit the map tab and the measure tool and then uh, just draw a straight line between these two. So a straight line is uh, 5,454 meters, so just a fraction of the length through the network. So that's basically how you do this tool. Now I told you there's another way we could do it if we wanted to. Um, instead of selecting the streams, we could actually make a polyline feature class that showed that connection. If you want to do that, it's in the advanced options. Just click that, scroll down to the bottom, where you want your result types. And we're going to pick aggregated geometry. That makes uh, feature classes. It's going to make two feature classes. The points will be all the nodes, the node junctions along the path. The aggregated lines is that polyline feature class. So we could do this as well. So this does not make a selection. So I'm just going to hit run. It's going to make new feature classes. Okay, now it's done. I can turn off my original streams and I'll just make this a little brighter. And this is the path. So that's it. The tools can be a little flaky sometimes. It's really easy to set up parameters wrong and it just won't work, but you know, 
just keep at it, you'll get it. Uh, one downside of this tool is that it'll only go between two pre-specified points. And you know, if you wanted to find the distance between all possible pairs of springs, well, that, that, this tool would be pretty miserable, unless you learn how to code. If you can operate this tool through code, then you can just put it into loops and have it generate all of it uh, automatically. Just another reason to maybe want to learn to code. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. I think that wraps it up. You take care.